Meatball Guys. What up, guys? This is Meatball Guys. Back here again with another video. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys some early gameplay for a game called Tunic. Specifically, I'm going to be playing the E3 Summer Game Fest demo on an Xbox Series X. Now, if you're not familiar, Tunic is an upcoming action-adventure game. It's getting a lot of Zelda comparisons. It's developed by a Canadian indie developer named Andrew Shouldis, and it's published by Finji. Finji just released a game called Chicory, A Colorful Tale, and right now that's exclusive to PlayStation. But I gotta say, even though Chicory is getting some great reviews, I'd much rather have Tunic as an Xbox exclusive. And that's basically what uh, Finji is doing right now. They're making an exclusive for PlayStation in Chicory, A Colorful Tale, and they're making Tunic an exclusive for Xbox. You can get either of these exclusives on PC, so if you have a PC, you're going to be able to play either of them. Alright, so it says, this demo is a small sample of what Tunic is all about. It says, go find a stick, a sword, and find some secrets. Okay, cool. So, as I mentioned before, this is getting a ton of Zelda comparisons. And, I mean, a game has to be really good to get some Zelda comparisons. So, um, I thought that was definitely interesting. And that's really what caught my interest in terms of trying this demo. I've heard a lot of great things about Tunic. A lot of people saying they're looking forward to the game. Again, those Zelda comparisons. So, I was really excited that we were going to get a chance to check out the game via the E3 demo. Now, the game doesn't have any specific release date yet, however, it's expected to release in 2021, so sometime this year we should be getting the game. Now, I was a bit concerned, to be honest, on whether I would enjoy the game or not, and that's just because people are saying really great things about it, and sometimes when people are hyping up a game, you get heightened expectations, and then sometimes, you know, you dive into a game with basically too high of expectations, and it just ends up being all right because you know a bunch of people hyped it up so i was hoping i wasn't going to experience that while trying to play through this demo but i gotta say even after playing through the full demo guys this game has a ton of potential i totally understand why people are talking about the game a lot i always hear tunic this tunic that in terms of upcoming indie releases and this game is a lot like Zelda. I mean, I understand where the Zelda comparisons are coming from. Look, I mean, we just found our first weapon. It was a stick, and we were able to destroy some pots with it. I mean, that's Zelda vibes right away. And even the fighting system. I mean, you lock on with the left trigger, and then you can use whatever button you assigned your stick to to attack. And the fighting really feels like Zelda as well. Um, you know, you can roll, dodge, things like that. So the whole locking on and rolling and all of that, it really, really gives you a lot of Zelda vibes. So I got to say, if you are a huge Zelda fan, more than likely you are really going to love Tunic. I wouldn't call this a Zelda clone because it does feel like its own game, but you can definitely feel the Zelda inspiration here. I'm sure the developer is highly inspired by Zelda. There's honestly probably like five or six times during this gameplay demo that I got Zelda vibes. So I think it's highly inspired, but not necessarily a clone or anything like that, which is good because as much as you may want a Zelda clone on Xbox, you know, we want to play something different. If we want to play that game, then we would, you know, run it up on a Nintendo Switch or something like that. So yeah, I think it's like the perfect amount of inspiration to the point where it doesn't feel like a clone. And I think that's actually really difficult for a lot of these developers to pull off or any artist in general, you know, making sure that you're inspired by something but not necessarily copying it. And I think this is a great example of that. Um, again, you're gonna get a ton of Zelda vibes, but you're also not going to feel like you're playing a Zelda game, you know, this is very much its own thing. So anyhow, let's go ahead and focus on the gameplay itself. I've been kind of wandering around making sure that I'm not missing anything. This was my first save point right there. If you interact with one of those fire pits, it appears to save your game. Now I'm blocked off of certain areas by these big blocks. I'm assuming they're bushes. So maybe I need to find a sword before I'm able to cut through those bushes. Right now I can walk through the grass, but I can't, you know, get through those bushes. And unfortunately my stick does not, you know, cut them down or damage them. Now this telescope basically gives me a better view at the level and I actually seen the sword at the bottom. So we're going to try to go uh, get that sword, so hopefully we can cut through some of these bushes and access additional parts of the level. So let's go ahead and head down here. 
speed up these enemies real quick with the classic stick. I'm not too sure how to get into those uh, doors. There was another one uh, that I passed earlier. So two doors that need to be unlocked. And right there we have our first enemy that actually has a sword. But it appears I was able to handle him pretty easily. I don't want to jinx myself. I have another one right here. I'm sure the sword will do much more damage. I just gotta, you know, make it there. I still have, you know, a decent amount of life left. If you haven't noticed yet, your life bar is the pink bar in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. It's the one that's starting to deplete really quickly as I'm getting attacked by these enemies. Last thing I want to do is die right before I'm about to get this sword. Again, you would respawn at the last fire pit that you interacted with because those are the checkpoints or save points. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the sword. This game has its own made up language or something like that. Um, you know, I made sure that my uh, language settings were correct. Uh, but yeah, it appears sometimes when you get like dialogue options and things like that, it'll basically show the game's own language. I don't know if it's type of alien language or fox language or what, but really you don't really need to read them. I think if you go into the inventory, it may translate it for you or I think I ended up picking up a piece of paper or something like that that helped translate it. You'll see what I'm talking about eventually. I'll point it out once I pick it up. But yeah, now that I got the sword, I'm able to chop through these bushes. So I'm just, you know, kind of checking the area, make sure I didn't miss anything. You know, because we did have some areas that I wasn't able to access at first because the stick wasn't able to chop through those bushes. For instance, this area right here. Now I can chop through the bushes and I can access this chest. And we got another pig or I think they're piggy banks. I tried using one of these and it just basically threw out a bunch of gems near me. So I think they just give you more money or gems. Not too sure what you use the gems for quite yet. We have another spot that I was able to access now that I can cut those bushes. I was able to push down this bridge. But before we go down there, let's go ahead and just make sure that we explored the whole level and that we're not missing any additional areas because you know, I like to make sure I cross my T and dot my I's and, you know, do my due diligence to make sure that I found everything in the level. That's just the completionist in me. So let's go ahead and knock out these enemies. I thought I had already killed these. I think once you go far away, they may respawn, which is kind of unfortunate. Now, as you would assume as a Zelda fan, there are potions in the game. I just haven't picked any up yet. So as of right now, I have no way to heal my character. So I just need to make sure that I'm being careful because I don't want to, you know, go back. Now, I'm not too sure why my character is flashing like that. I think it's just a bug in the demo, honestly. I think it stopped. Nope, it's still going. All right, or maybe that's just because I'm close to dying. I'm not too sure. Let me know down in the comments below if you've ever seen your character flash like that. Again, this is really early gameplay, so, you know, bugs are, you know, to be expected in early gameplay or demo. That's the whole reason that, you know, the game isn't finished yet. So they need some time to work out some of the bugs. But if this is some sort of animation that's linked to almost dying, I'd say maybe fix it or change it because it's a bit ugly. But my gut feeling says that this is some sort of bug going on with my character in terms of how it's flashing. It's like almost like a heat vision or something like that. Anyhow, let's go ahead and try to ignore that for now. I'm just checking around the level, making sure that I picked up everything. I think we had an area over here that I was blocked off by bushes as well. There we go. What do we have over here? Okay. Oh, snap. I think we got our first boss battle. All right. Wow. I got killed right away. Should I go back and face that boss? Maybe yeah, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait until I get a shield. Maybe once I get a shield, I'll go back and try to fight him. But I think I need my shield first because I need to be able to block attacks. There's no way I'm gonna be able to defeat that boss without a shield. I mean, you can dodge, but ultimately you need that shield as well. All right, so it appears we are heading into our first dungeon and we have a new enemy type, some sort of octopus. Okay, whoa, 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 and he explodes afterwards. That's giving me Zelda vibes again. All right, so we got to make sure that we dodge or roll away from these enemies. 
except it appears I cannot roll in the water, so I need to be careful because it slows you down a little bit. Luckily, I didn't get hit by the explosion. Open up another chest, and there we go, guys. We got our shield. That shield even looks a little Zelda-like, not gonna lie. Should I go back and face that boss? Let's do it. Let's do it. I would regret it if I didn't try to go, you know, face him one more time now that I have that shield. So we're going to head back over to basically the beginning of the level. There's a secret path to the right-hand side behind some bushes that sends you straight to a boss battle. Again, the boss appeared to, you know, be way, way stronger than me. So I'm not too sure how possible it is to defeat this boss in this demo. But now that I got the sword and shield, we're going to give it our best shot. I at least want to try it one time because we still have to finish searching through that dungeon as well. Wow, that's cool. So it looks like if you roll and you keep holding A afterward, you can actually sprint. So basically you're using the roll button or dodge button, which is A, and then you keep holding it and your fox will sprint, which is cool. So let's go ahead and try to defeat this skeleton boss one more time. Unfortunately, I only have about 60% life and I still haven't found any potions in the demo. I may need to come back once I find some potions. Let's see here. Maybe I can pull it off, guys, with some dodging and some blocking. We'll have to see. I'm not too sure if I can dodge his attacks with the shield. I, I was assuming so. Oh, great. He spawns enemies as well. But it also looks like, luckily, uh, he is able to kill his enemies. So he does have that friendly fire. So maybe if we get enemies that he spawns close to him maybe we can you know keep having him kill them for us all right i'm almost at about 50 percent and then i died all right still pretty difficult i'm sure it's possible but i'm gonna go ahead and finish searching through that dungeon and maybe we'll go back to the boss later we also have that door that appears to be locked i'm sure there's more than one way to complete the demo in the beginning of the demo, when it was telling us how to play or what to do, it did say find your sword, find your shield, and discover other secrets. So maybe there's multiple secrets or things to find in the demo. I'm assuming there's more than one way to complete it or get through it, as it appears there are a lot of different pathways and a lot of content in the demo. So let me know if you end up completing the demo a different way um, or if you're able to defeat that boss. For now, I'm going to go ahead and complete this dungeon. Or try to get through the dungeon as it appears there's still a lot to do here or you know it goes deeper so I basically had pulled a u-turn right at that point right after I got my shield so I want to go ahead and finish this dungeon as much as that boss is tempting now I was able to just save my game right there as I mentioned before the save marks or the checkpoints are going to be those little fire pits and right here this is where it told us how to play kind of translates that alien language for us so it says hold right trigger to block it says autobot warning us about those as well as the slorm which is that octopus looking enemy it says press rb to use your flask or your potion and then the attack buttons are going to be x y and b depending on where you place your weapon and a is to roll and that's about it I'm assuming maybe you get additional powers and have additional controls later, but for now, those are the controls. So, let's go ahead and clear out these enemies in this room and do some exploring, making sure that we're not missing anything. I think that's a dead end, nothing right there. We'll go ahead and check the other side out before we go up those stairs. Again, I'm a completionist, you know. I like to make sure I go through and basically check every corner whoa I was able to walk under that waterfall see we already found our first secret I'm not too sure what that is I wonder if I put that in one of the doors that we found earlier because remember um, we went past two doors that were locked in the beginning of the level when we were outside it's pretty tempting to maybe go back there and see if I can open one of those doors now maybe I'll do it I'm not too sure yet. Let's go ahead and keep proceeding through this dungeon for now. Alright, walk away fast before I get blown up. Walk away again. And there we go. Let's see here. Let's go up these stairs. And it looks like there are one of those turrets that the game was mentioning earlier. 
we definitely want to be careful with that um, I don't know if I can use my shield if it will block that power beam or what let's see if we can attack it quick enough before it attacks us nope nope well okay so a couple things you can't attack it quick enough for you to be able to destroy it before it shoots you so you do need to hold the right trigger to block and blocking did uh, block that power beam now we're gonna go ahead and set down this little bridge right here so that way it's a little bit easier to progress through this room maybe if I die or something like that I'll have that bridge rather than having to go through that turret again okay and it appears this room heads over to the left we have three octopuses nice all right we were able to kill the other two with the first one because again they explode after you kill them we have another one hiding right here in the dark all right so we're gonna go through this door and it looks like we have a secret path right there gonna check that out before we head down into the water okay we gotta watch out maybe these uh, barrels will protect me not so much not so much gotta use the block button guys because I'm pretty sure these turrets can kill you in one hit <laughs> a matter of fact I think I just got my first game over or that was my second game over right because I got killed by that other boss that skeleton boss actually it's my third I got killed by the skeleton boss twice what am I thinking all right, so we're gonna run past the enemies this time. We have that bridge laid down, enabling us to pretty much sprint through those two rooms. However, this guy followed me from the other room, which is interesting. It doesn't appear to be one of those games where the enemies can't follow you into the next room. They most definitely can follow you into the next room. So you may want to watch out or be careful for that. Now we're already almost to where I died at. Um, it was right over here. Okay, so it appears that when you die, you leave some sort of treasure chest. I'm assuming that's basically what was in your inventory or your gems. Kind of like a Souls-like game when you die and you kind of like leave your soul there. And to pick up your stuff or your progress, you need to go, you know, pick up that soul or whatever. So that's cool, especially because a lot of people are into the, that, you know, Souls-like style game. And, you know, some people may consider that as a welcoming feature you know being able to basically collect your stuff at the place where you died last and speaking of dying I'm about to die but luckily I was able to drop that bridge first which is a huge shortcut I'm gonna show you guys where that bridge is located at it's pretty much right here so you see that bridge right there that's the bridge I just dropped so now I'm able to pretty much just take that little shortcut right there and I don't need to go through those other four or five rooms now, I mentioned earlier, I wanted to go back and see if that gold item I found under the waterfall uh, maybe unlocks some of those doors earlier in the demo. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to check those doors, maybe see if I'm able to open them now. Now, I'm going to go ahead and basically just spoil this for you guys. I don't want to waste any time. I ended up going back over there and it didn't look like it unlocked any of the doors. So. I'm not too sure how to unlock the two locked doors in the beginning of the demo or level. I didn't end up figuring it out, but I went ahead and fast forwarded through this because there's really no point in you guys bearing with me while I went and checked the doors for them basically to not unlock. So I basically wasted my time. Don't want to waste yours. So that's why I went ahead and fast forwarded through this. Afterwards, I ended up getting back to the dungeon and I ended up taking the new pathway. Uh, basically where I set that bridge down at for that huge shortcut right in the beginning of the dungeon now I'm gonna retrace my steps just a little bit just to make sure I did not miss anything because I had pretty much sprinted past uh, this whole section right here to be able to get to that bridge so that I can lower it and get that shortcut unlocked so you know beforehand I didn't kill that enemy nor the enemies right there but I pretty much just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything in that corner on the lower left hand side so at this point I think I have this whole room cleared out I'm gonna go ahead and go back to where I lowered the bridge at there's a treasure chest right there in the water however I didn't feel it was worth it because there's these squid like enemies in the water right there and they are extremely strong and I didn't have too much success playing against them in the first time I played the demo 
All right, so we found something new, but again, no way to translate it or figure out what it is exactly. And it doesn't appear to be in our normal inventory, so I can't even use it. So I'm not too sure about that one. Again, there's a lot to figure out in this game, uh, which is cool, you know? It's kind of mysterious, and it gives it a lot of replay value because it appears the game is pretty deep. So either it's going to take a while to figure it out, or, you know, you would have to look up some guides to figure out what you're doing exactly. But right here, I found another secret path, but I had a bunch of secret enemies right at the end, so hopefully they don't kill me because I want to try to open up this chest right here. I'm still trying to find a potion. Um, earlier, the instructions or that instruction page that we found told me that I can use my flask by pressing RB. Now, that appeared to be some sort of flask. However, I don't know if that was a potion. I guess we'll have to find out. No, yeah, it's not letting me use that. Um, so I'm not too sure what to use those potion jars for, but we'll have to figure it out. Um, otherwise, at this point, I have about 30%, maybe 40% on my HP bar. And right here, it appears we have a new type of enemy. It's like a, a boss version of those little dudes right there. He attacks way stronger, and he has a much longer weapon. All right, let's see. I'm about to die right now. I believe that's why my character is flashing. I know earlier, uh, maybe we thought it was a glitch, but it appears that when you're about to die that your character does flash. I don't know, um, again, if that's a, a glitch or a bug, or maybe that's just, you know, how it works. Because earlier, you know, our character was flashing, but um, I, I probably had, like, you know, close to 50% life, so... I would think that it would only flash maybe if you were like in the bottom 10 or 15 percent of your life bar but who knows anyhow i ended up killing that uh, little boss enemy right there i don't think he was actually a boss but he was definitely a stronger enemy just making sure i cleared out the room and that i got everything we're gonna go ahead and head through here now that we went ahead and opened that door okay and it appears it ended up teleporting us somewhere because it doesn't look like we have any way to go back where we came from Oh well, there's a treasure chest right there, but it doesn't appear I can access it. If you guys haven't noticed already, you can't jump, or at least not yet. So let's go ahead and go down here and keep exploring. We can either go to the left or to the right. Let's check the right hand side. It appears we're blocked off. I don't know if those are blocks specific for the demo or if you end up uh, being able to slash through those with a certain type of weapon. Not sure. Let's check out the second telescope. Last time this showed us basically what was ahead of us in the level. However, this time it appears to end the demo. Dang, I really wanted to go back and face that boss. So it appears this demo has some replay value. Um, there's some other things I definitely haven't discovered. I'm sure I didn't even get close to 100%ing the demo. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff to uncover, secrets, things like that. So make sure you guys download the demo and check it out. I highly recommend it. I think this game's going to be awesome. Other than that, I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers. We just hit 16 patrons. I'd like to give a special shout out to everybody in the biggest fan club, including TimG84, AOJ, Kegger101, Kana25, Michael Banksa, and Purple Rain 6 As always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe.